Hey guys, so today I wanted to give you a quick overview of how the skin develops. This is going to be a little bit of a quicker lecture because the skin isn't that complicated when it comes to development. Well, I mean, not in comparison to some of the other parts of the body that we've talked about. So, all right, let's see here. Let's shrink this window down, put this right here. All right, so we're talking about the development of the skin and we're really gonna begin around four weeks after uh, fertilization here. So if we look at um, the skin four weeks after fertilization, this is what we've got going on. This blue layer, that represents the ectoderm. So obviously the outer layer of the skin, which is the epidermis, is gonna develop from ectoderm, whereas the deeper layer of the skin, which is called the dermis, that's gonna develop from mesoderm. So here we have this blue ectoderm layer, and then beneath it you have this thin basement membrane, which is a thin layer of interconnected proteins that connects this, that creates this boundary between the ectoderm and the underlying mesoderm, which is shown in green. This underlying mesoderm is called, um, is just filled with mesenchyme or mesenchymal cells. And that's just a fancy word for endodermal, for mesodermal cells that will go on to become something else. These mesenchymal cells of the mesoderm will go on to become cells of um, the dermis. All right, so by eight weeks, we've got some changes that have already started to occur. This ectoderm has now divided into two layers. We have this basal layer that's on the bottom next to the basement membrane, and then you have um, these paradermal cells which have formed, and they lie superficial to the basal layer. You can see they're flatter, so they're almost squamous um, in their shape, if you remember that from anatomy and physiology. And then if we jump to 10 weeks, you'll notice that something else is happening. These cells of the basal layer have undergone um, cell divisions. And that's worth mentioning. You know, if we jump back up to eight weeks, these paradermal cells were produced by cell divisions from these cells of the basal layer. Now these cells of the basal layer by 10 weeks have produced um, a couple layers of uh, new cells which now constitute the intermediate layer. And it's all due to cell divisions of these cells of the basal layer. So, I mean, really what's going on from week four to 10 is that the epidermis, which is derived from the ectoderm, is just getting thicker and thicker due to cell divisions from these um, cells of the basal layer. Now, if we jump over, by 17 weeks, these cells in this intermediate layer, they're gonna start a new process in which they start producing uh, keratin and they lose their nucleus. So these red cells that make up this intermediate layer, about four months of age, four months after fertilization. They're producing keratin. Now keratin is a protein that's gonna give the future epidermis more strength. It's not as strong as something like collagen, but it is useful because it gives the skin a little bit more strength. Now once these cells produce keratin, they're gonna lose the nucleus. That's why these cells near the surface or near the superficial kind of side of the um, the developing epidermis, they don't have this little red dot, which is the nucleus. They've already produced the keratin, they've lost that nucleus. This whole process is gonna continue until we're pretty much left with the skin that looks like this at birth, okay? So if we start, this, the outer layer of the skin, which is derived from ectoderm, this is the epidermis, is gonna consist of um, a couple of different layers. At the very bottom, this is called the stratum basale. It's gonna consist of these keratinocytes, which are skin cells, that are constantly dividing towards the surface. Okay, this intermediate layer is now divided up into a couple of different um, layers, just superficial or just above the stratum basale is the stratum spinosum. Then just above that is the stratum granulosum. Now, the cells in these red layers are undergoing this like progression of movement towards the surface of the skin, and that's because cells are being produced underneath them. Now, in the stratum granulosum, these cells are undergoing a process called keratinization. That's when they produce this keratin that we talked about earlier. They lose their nucleus, and they also produce these glycolipids, which create this waterproof barrier that keeps fluid in the body, and it keeps like, things out of the body. After this keratinization occurs, the cells are going to die because they cannot acquire nutrients through this waterproof layer. That produces the outer layer of skin called the stratum corneum. 
These consist of just dead remnants of old keratinocytes, just their cell membrane, the keratin that's left over, and they're constantly being sloughed off as the, um, you know, as, as the cells are kind of produced underneath them. Also in the stratum basale, you're going to have a couple of melanocytes. That's what these little purple um, cells represent. These cells are really important because they produce melanin, which is a pigment that is deposited on top of the nuclei of these young keratinocytes in the stratum spinosum. That melanin will help protect the nuclei of these keratinocytes from ultraviolet light, and this gives skin its uh, color. All right. All the while underneath this dermis, that is going to be derived from mesoderm. The dermis is going to contain lots of blood vessels, lots of sensory cells, and it's going to contain um, other cells like uh, the cells of the immune system. Um, the dermis is going to be uh, very strong. It consists of two layers. The more superficial layer is called the papillary layer, or the deeper layer is called the reticular layer. I'm not super worried about all that. But for now, I guess for this class, we can just remember that the dermis is derived from mesoderm and it's going to be filled with blood vessels and sensory cells, whereas the epidermis is derived from ectoderm and that is going to comprise of these keratinocytes, which ultimately help to create this waterproof barrier to keep water in and keep bad things out and it also helps to protect uh, the skin. All right, so that was a quick little overview. Hopefully that helped kind of clarify where the two layers of the skin came from. Thank you.